Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video. So other than expected, we are not talking about the feature set of Octane 2026 Alpha, unfortunately, but about Maxon's latest Cinema 4D release, because they enabled their ACES workflow in there. And unfortunately, that sort of clashes with the Octane color workflow. So in this week's video, as sort of an emergency, we are talking about how to fix that and get your on your way with the right colors. So without further ado, let's grab your coffee and let's jump right in. Welcome to Cinema 4D land. Let's pretend we just installed this version of Cinema 4D 2026. Ignore that it already has a Octane layout, this is just to make things simple. Let's say we for whatever reason want to create a colored cube with an Octane. So we create a cube and then also we need a material. So let's go to the materials and create a glossy material, assign it to the cube. And then we can go back to the albedo of the material and create a color here. To do that, let's go to Cinema 4D's color swatch and create a bright saturated red and then compare it to Octane's output. And we can see that's not the color that we chose at all. But wait, there's more. If we now make the object darker, then you can see the saturation drains from it. And also the swatch might show a brighter color than the actual object. You can also see it here very good. And last but not least, not only brightness and saturation handling is affected. If we go to the purple tones, you can see also the color is mismatching here. And this of course can be a huge problem if you're dialing in colors to your scene using color swatches. Of course, this difference here is very obvious, but it can be subtle enough so you don't notice unless you're hours or even days ahead into your project. Tell me how I know. Now, as I'm an honest soul, I cannot keep my secrets, so I already gave away the premise of this whole video in the intro. What you need to do to get there is to go to Mode, then Scene, and then to Color Management, and then you can see that the whole Cinema 4D scene is color managed in an ACES workflow. And this is of course what throws off Octane, because Octane right now is expecting sRGB values. And you might be asking, how do I get around that? So every time you start a scene in Cinema 4D with the premise of using it with Octane, you need to go to the color management by going to mode and then scene. You can also hit Control D to get to this menu. Then click on change render space. And instead of ACES, what you want to do is go with legacy sRGB linear workflow. So if you click that and then hit OK, go back to your material, then the colors should match. Notice due to the magic of editing, we are back to before the conversion. So I want to show something. Despite the scene here is giving us the option to convert colors, it always will end up in the color displayed in the live viewer. You might have noticed that we converted our colors before. So if we uncheck that and go with the legacy linear sRGB workflow here again and click OK, you can see we end up with the same color no matter what. If you made the same mistake than I did and started shading your project without knowing that there's the wrong color space in place, then there's good news and bad news. The good news is if you relied on your live viewer for the colors and you convert your scene like this, then there's no problem at all. But if you relied on the color swatches, bringing in, for example, your brand colors, then this is all wrong and you have to do it again after the conversion. And if you're now going, what? I have to go to my scene attributes and change the color space every time I start an Octane scene? Well, there are some workarounds here. So we can choose this color space, so the legacy RGB one as a standard. If you're mostly working with Octane like I do, you can do that here, for example, by go to save preset and then set it as default, call it as RGB, for example, and then go OK, though I do it a different way. So what I usually do is set up my scene, my project file here, exactly as I want to see a new scene. This not only includes the color spaces, but for example, the FPS, I usually work in 25 FPS and also the render settings. I increased the resolution here to full HD and gave my render outputs an EXR output, as well as the render tokens that I always use here. 
Right now, the scene would include the cube and the material. I probably would delete that. But if we are done preparing our scene, what we would do is just save it somewhere. Then as a last step, we need to dive in our preferences, go to files, scroll down until we see the default scene. And instead of blank, we go with custom. And here you can link your custom file that you saved somewhere on your hard drive. So whenever we do a new scene now, so let's go with new. You can see if I go to color management, I already set mine to be a linear workflow one. This is essentially it. Sorry for the bare bones presentation. I just wanted to get this out to reach as many people as possible so they don't make the same mistakes that I did and work within the right color space. And this is it for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and thanks a lot to my Patreons for making this possible. Especially my 50 Euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 Euro tier subscribers, for the thieves, Alessio de Vecchi, Ami Schietried, Christian Grajewski, Graham Bagnell, Grigoris Morikis, Joel Mackemer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Lucas M. Silveira, Mike Rogers, Mikkel Obenhus, Ness Graphics, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralf, Random Capybara, Raiko, Shiro2049, Zu Shack, Terry Wayne Ranson, Jan Verbeke, and Yasin Rupp. Hey there, after show party goers. Thank you very much for watching again. I think we have a bingo. We did it. We made the shortest video that I ever made, probably allegedly. Since it's so short, don't despair. There will be another video dealing with baking color spaces into outputs, such as the ACES2 sRGB or HEX. And also, let's make this outro section a little bit more colorful, a little bit more poppy. If you want, write me in the comments what you're working on, if it's not under NDA, and what you're doing in general, if you want to write that even. I myself, as it is very obvious, I'm wrapping up this video. I already edited it. I'm just recording the after clapper voice edit. And then I'm going to record the whole second video about the image sequences that we talked about just now. And don't forget the tradition. If you want to help me against the algorithm overlords, let's post a warning sign or a attention sign. I don't know. Is it called like this? Let me look it up. No, it's called warning sign. Let's post a warning sign in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. And I say, have a great week. Have a good time. And if something is mismatching between your color swatch, your live viewer and your output, then something's wrong. So may the color be with you and goodbye.